All right, guys, let's stand up. Let's worship together tonight. Come on.
You guys, who's got a hallelujah for Jesus in here tonight? Let me hear it. There we go. Sort of. Okay, I'll take that. Hey, if you have not grabbed your communion, there is some right there in the middle on the table in the back. If you didn't grab one of those, if you already got one, grab that out. The reason we get to take communion is because of Jesus. The reason we take communion is to declare the gospel that is the reason why we can say, I bring a hallelujah, I declare hallelujah, which means blessed be the name of the Lord. Because Jesus, even though he was God, became a man. He lived in our place. He died in our place. And after he was buried, he was raised on the third day. After he hung out and showed himself to all the disciples, he ascended into heaven where he is now preparing a place for us. And every time we take communion, that's what we're declaring, that I know that my God became a man, lived and died for me, and rose from the grave and promised that he will take me with him to that same place that he's going to raise us up out of the grave, that the grave will not be our final destination. That's what we're saying with this. So, if you have the communion now, if you can peel back the, the clear top layer and pull out the wafer, this piece of bread, this little cracker thing represents the body of Christ broken on a cross for us. If you believe that Jesus died for you, will you take this with me now? And then this juice representing the blood of Christ, paying for our sins. If you believe that Jesus is your savior, and that he rose from the grave, that he's gonna take us into eternity with him. Will you take this with me now? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the sacrifice that you made possible for us, not just to remember you, not just to know you a little better, but to know you and to be with you for eternity. And we worship you in this day and we can raise our hallelujahs and shout for joy because we have eternal life with our God who loves us and who made us in his image. And we thank you for that this evening, Lord. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen.
That is who you are. 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 Jesus, we thank you. When there seems to be no way, you make a way for us. What's up, guys? How are you? Wow, that's really encouraging right there. How are you guys doing? Okay, we're almost there. That's like only adults. Anybody under the age of 18, how are you doing? Okay, anybody not in middle school, how are you doing? Yeah, we're almost there, high schoolers. How are you? There we go, all right. Hey, <clears throat> my name is Sean, and uh, I'm one of the pastors here. And Pastor Jerry is under the weather. Uh, so please be praying for him and his family uh, as um, just as we go through this crazy, crazy season of COVID and life and all of that. Do me a favor. Turn to your neighbor right now. All right. And uh, if you don't have a neighbor, find a neighbor. Um, turn to your neighbor and say, hello, neighbor. Um, say, uh, look at your neighbor's shoes for a moment. Say, nice kicks, neighbor. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, now, ask your neighbor this. Can you still smell what you had for dinner? Go. I made the worst mistake ever. Um, I had a bowl of garlic pesto pasta. <sighs> All right, hopefully you can still smell it. But then you wear a mask. It's amazing. You smell it forever. It's awesome. Um, that has nothing to do with anything. Just want you to relax a little bit um, so that we can have some fun tonight. Who can tell me, maybe you can give me a little bit of who knows, the vision at Pantano Christian Church? What's our mission at Pantano? Who can give me the first word of our mission? Say it. Loving. Loving. All right, excellent. Second word, people. people, all right? I'll give you the third word, two, all right? Fourth word, Jesus, Jesus. all right? And <laughs> launching, very good. All right, this is a hard one. Launching what? Passionate. Passionate. Okay, you have to be under the age of 18 to be screaming out these answers and not work here, Melissa. All right, and launching, passionate what? People to what? Uh, this is where it falls off, right? To what? Huh? <laughs> it was Brian. <laughs> yeah. To make a difference in their world. Launching passion, loving people to Jesus and launching passionate people to make a difference in their world. Last week we started a new series called Mission Go. And in this series, we're talking about the Great Commission as it's found in the book of Matthew chapter 28. And the Great Commission in the book of Matthew chapter 28 says this. Wow, it worked. Um, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Who said this? 
Jesus, that's always a safe answer. Especially if it's like in red or something in your Bible. But normally, you, maybe 50-50, you're good on that one, right? But Jesus said this. He said, I want you to go. I want you to make disciples. And that's what Pastor Brian talked about last week, right? He talked about going out into the world and being intentional with your lives to make disciples. And this week, we're going to talk uh, about the next phrase that's in the Great Commission. And it's this, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And so tonight, I wanna talk about this idea of baptism, but before we go any further, I just wanna unpack a little bit about what baptism is. See, baptism is an outward expression of an inward change. In other words, it's, it's something we do to show the world that we've changed on the inside. And so this inward change, this inward commitment comes when we have this face-to-face -face encounter with Jesus that changes us forever. We come face-to-face -face with him and we commit our lives to him. We acknowledge that it's only through him that we have relationship with God the Father. It's only through him that we have a new life and we can become a new creation. It's only through him that we can have a fresh start in life. And then that outward sign, the outward expression is, is baptism. You see, baptism is very symbolic. Did you guys get a chance to catch the baptisms this weekend uh, during main service? Yeah, for those of you who didn't, uh, either you weren't here or um, you didn't catch it online, I think we had seven in the first service, and I'm not exactly sure how many we had in the second service, but people saying, you know what, 11 in the second 11 total. But it's people saying, my life is different now because I'm committing to following Jesus. And it's symbolic of you enter into the waters as the old you. They take you down under the water. That's your death, burial, and resurrection. And you come up out of the water a new creation. That's the symbolism of baptism. The water isn't magic. It'd be cool if it was, but it's not, right? It's just water. But it's showing the world that we are different now. That you have made a decision to follow Jesus and to live your life the best that you can as a follower of him. It tells the world that we're ready for this fresh start in our life, that we're a new creation. And so tonight, we're going to look at an account in Scripture in the book of Acts. Now, now it's, that's A-C-T-S, not A-X, right? The book of Acts, that was a joke. It was almost funny. The book of Acts, chapter 8. So if you have your Bibles, if you have your phones, go ahead and open up your Bible app to the book of Acts, chapter 8. We're going to start in verse 26. And, and this is an account of somebody who was, who was really seeking Jesus. And so maybe... Tonight, that's you. Maybe tonight you came here because your friend said we should go, and now you're like, why? Maybe your parents were like, you're going, and now you're like, why? But see, I think that maybe God brought you here for a very, very specific reason. And that reason is to hear this. He loves you more than you could ever imagine, and he offers you a new beginning. He offers you a second chance. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what you're doing. He still loves you. And he offers you a new beginning and a second chance. And that's what this guy, that's where we find this guy. Book of Acts chapter 8. We're going to start in verse 26. Here's what it says. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, so Philip was one of the followers of God, said to Philip, go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. And so he started out on his way and he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of the queen of the, of the Ethiopians. And this man had gone to Jerusalem to worship. And on his way home, he was sitting in his chariot, reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. And the spirit told Philip, go to the chariot 
and just stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading, Philip asked? How can I unless someone explains it to me? So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. And this is the passage of scripture that the eunuch was reading. He was led like sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his, in his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, Tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about? Himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, look, here's some water. Wow. Look, here's water. What can stand in the way of me being baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again but went on his way rejoicing. It's a crazy story. It's a crazy account of scripture, of, of God doing some incredible things. And, and if you're looking for a fresh start in your life tonight, no matter what's been going on, but you're looking, you're like, man, I just, I'm so sick of this COVID stuff. I'm so sick of school in my bedroom or on my computer. I'm so sick of never getting to see my friends. I'm so sick that they're on again and off again. Whatever it might be, you're just ready for a fresh start. We've got some three questions that we need to ask. The first one is this, and it's simple. Am I ready? Am I ready for this? See, this, this Ethiopian guy, he was, he was kind of a big deal. It, in, in our world today, it would be like he was, uh, he was on the cabinet for the president, right? He was this big time, he was secretary of the treasury for the queen of the Ethiopians. So he had just come from Jerusalem where he was worshiping. This doesn't make any sense. He, he didn't know who he was worshiping. He wasn't a Jew. He was this high... This guy with a lot of power, high official. He was ready for a fresh start because he was going to Jerusalem because he was wanting to learn more about God. Maybe that's you tonight. You came here because maybe just somewhere deep down inside of you, there's this burning desire, this little, this little tugging, this little poking of, man, you need to know more. You need to check this out. And that's who this Ethiopian was. He wanted to learn more about this foreign God and so he went far away making a trip so he could learn more. But see, so often in life, we're just not ready for a fresh start. We do whatever we can to avoid it. Maybe you're sitting here tonight and you're doing whatever you can to not listen to me. You're on Instagram, you're Snapchatting, you're taking pictures, you're talking to your friends and just totally ignoring me. Whatever that might be, maybe you're just not ready. You're just not ready for that. See, sometimes we would rather complain that we can't seem to find a fresh start or a new beginning, but we're really not looking for one. And that means that we're just not ready. But, but tonight, maybe you're ready. And you've asked yourself, am I, I don't know if I want to know about this God thing, but maybe I do, I'll just check it out. See, on the outside, this guy, this Ethiopian eunuch, seemed to have his entire act together. And yet, on the inside, he wanted more. His heart was ready for something else. So ask yourself tonight, am I ready for a fresh start? Am I ready for a new beginning? Am I ready for a second chance? Am I ready for a new life? Whatever, which ones of those just appeals to you, am I ready for it? And if the answer is yes, then we have to ask ourselves the second question. It's this, am I willing to ask for help? Am I willing to ask for help? See, when God led, led Philip to this Ethiopian eunuch, he wasn't afraid to ask 
for help. Think about this. Maybe you're, you're, uh, you drive. How many of you guys drive legally? Okay. Yeah. Right, middle schools. I can drive go kart, right? Mario Kart and stuff. All right, no, but no, you, you imagine you're driving, you're at the stoplight, you're listening to Bible on whatever because you're cool like that, and you're and you have your windows down, and somebody comes up next to you and they're like, Hey, do you know what you're listening to? Do you understand it? What would be your first response? Right? Window up. We're like, freak. Dad, somebody's talking to me. Right? So it, it, whatever it might be, right, that would be our first response. But this guy's first response, right, he's sitting in his chariot reading from the prophet Isaiah. And Philip is just like, hey, do you understand what you're reading? He comes up next to him. He's like, do you understand what you're reading? And he's like, um, no. And Philip's like, well, I can, I can tell you, I can share it with you. And so then he asked for help. He said, you know what, come up here, explain it to me, right? He said, how can I understand unless someone explains it to me? So he said, come up and tell me. But so often, guys, we want this fresh start in life or, or we want to do something different, but our pride gets in the way because we're not willing to ask for help. We're not willing to say, I don't understand. We're not willing to say, this scares me. Because on the outside, we gotta keep this up, right? We can't let other people know that on the inside, we're a wreck because we're scared. We're scared that somebody we know is gonna get COVID and die. We're scared that somebody's gonna find out who I really am, not who I put on social media. Maybe we're scared that we're not going to be able to live up to the expectations our parents put on us. We're scared and we're not willing to share. And that's, that's what happened here. He, he, just, he was like, you know what? I don't know. Can you come help me? Come tell me. Show me. See, if we truly want a fresh start, we need to ask for help. We need to humble ourselves and seek the insight of others. Maybe it's your small group leader. Maybe it's the person who brought you here tonight. Maybe it's Pastor Brian or, or one of the pastors here at Pantano. But we gotta be willing to ask them for help. In the book of James, chapter five, verse 16, it says this. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Did you ever think about that? That the Bible says that if we confess to each other and we pray for each other, that's where healing comes from. When we let other people in, when we ask for help. See, we're in this together. We're on this road together. And even if you don't want even if you don't want to do it on your own, there's people there that will help you. Sometimes we ask for help and we just, we're not willing to receive it. Reminds me of this story uh, during this hurricane. Everything flooded. And this guy takes his family and they're just praying. They're praying, God, please save our house. Save our city, protect us. And the water keeps rising and the rain keeps coming and the water keeps rising and they, they, they move to the roof of their house. Maybe you've seen people like this on the news, right, during hurricanes that are standing on the roof of their house. And they're standing on the roof of their house and, and they're just praying as a family, God, save us. And this guy comes by in a, in a little rowboat thing and, and he, he says, come on guys, I'll help you. And they're like, no, we're gonna keep praying. We believe God is going to save our house and save us. And a little while later, a bigger boat comes by and they're, they're like, guys, you need to come with us. The water's rising. And, and they're like, no, we're gonna keep praying. We're gonna keep praying that God will save us. 
And, and the water continues to rise and the, and the rescue helicopter comes by and drops the basket and they're screaming down, get in the basket. We're trying to save you, let's go. And they're like, no, we're gonna continue to pray that God will save our house. And the water rises and takes them away. And when they're, they're standing in heaven, they, they go to God and they're like, God, we prayed to you that you would help us. We prayed, and he said, I did help you. I sent you a canoe and a boat and a helicopter, but you were too proud to take the help. See, sometimes God is, is saying, I am putting people right in front of you right now, right now, to help you. And it might be someone that you had never dreamed of talking to, and he's saying, I'm, I'm putting them there. Take the help. See, if we're truly ready for a fresh start, that when we ask for help from others around us, we're going to be ready. We're going to be ready and looking for it. And the third question we have to ask ourselves, if we want this fresh start, is am I seizing the opportunities in front of me? Am I seeing where God is offering to help and seizing it. As soon as the Ethiopian saw a chance to show the world that God had changed him by being baptized, what did he do? No, I'll talk about it later. No, they're, they're continuing down this road and it wasn't some deserted road somewhere. Think of like I-10 between Tucson and Phoenix. Always busy. It was this type of road that people are walking and riding horses and on chariots, and he sees water and he's like, there's water, I wanna tell the world, let's go. And that's what they went and did. See, baptism is this sign of a fresh start in someone's life. It's saying we're no longer following who we used to be, but now we're living who God has called us to be. See, we all have a chance to start over. And to show the world that we're serious. We all have a chance for a relationship with Jesus. And to show people that we are changed. Why don't you guys take a look at this video. Our family was always really happy very active, very loud, and I was very blessed that we found a church when I was young that I connected to. I started to lead worship when I was in the teenage years, and um, it really took off, and being on stage felt like I was home. I started feeling an incredible, overwhelming need to be perfect, and it grew and it made me doubt myself. And then I found myself feeling out of control with a lot of anxiety driving me, having to be perfect at school, having to be perfect on stage. On the outside, I had it all together, and that just wasn't the case. I began to feel incredibly insecure in my own skin. Before I knew it, I was really in the throes of an eating disorder. It crumbled into rolling a tornado of destruction in our family and in everything around me. It, it broke my body down. I, before I knew it, my gallbladder had to be taken out. Um, my kidneys were failing. My liver was in rejection. It became a selfish way to live. It became an addiction that I had to hide. I didn't know how to let go of it. It became something that I thought was my identity. And I never saw a way out. So the traces of this stayed in my life for 17 years. Something that started at an early age that was very, very severe at one point became something that I call highly functioning. In a sense, I just feel stuck. And I felt his overwhelming presence of love and power and support scoop me up and show me through people through situations that he was real and that if I latched on to his strength, that that would heal me. Obedience was something I had lacked for a very long time. I was obedient to 
the wrong things. I decided, Lord, I need to answer. I need to give you my yes. And I think that started with baptism. And my, my heart for this was to rededicate my life. I have been made new, and I am ready to tell the world. I don't know where you're at in your walk with Christ tonight, in your relationship with God. But I do know this, that if, if you're at a point right now where you're like, man, uh, I, I don't know God, but I think I want to. Tonight, when you go into your small groups, as we break up into those groups in just a minute after Brian comes and shares some announcements, I want to encourage you, don't be scared. Seize the opportunity for a fresh start in life. Take that moment to just say, you know what? I don't get it, but man, I want to. And maybe you've, you've been here and you've come face to face with God and you've had this life-changing moment with him, but you've kind of been hiding it because you're worried about what other people are going to think. I want to challenge you tonight. Be bold. Show the world that you're changed. And one way to do that is through baptism. We're going to have a, another uh, time where we uh, are able to baptize and, uh, here at the church. And, and we just want to invite you, if that's where God is tugging you and leading you, share that with your small group leaders tonight. Let's pray and then Brian's going to come up. Father, thank you. Thank you for these students. Thank you for the opportunity to just get to be with them tonight. And Lord, I pray that I know all of us have something we're worried about. Whatever that might be, Lord, I pray that we would give it to you. And Father, for those of us who, who just are checking you out right now, Lord, I pray that we would be bold enough to ask questions. Say, explain this to me of our small group leaders and the people that are with us. And Father, those of us who know you, but we, we've been afraid to tell the world that we do because we're afraid we're going to mess up and they're going to make fun of us, Lord, I pray that we would just realize that your love never fails and you will never give up on us. And so, Lord, I pray that we would be bold enough to show the world through baptism that we are new creations in you. Father, I pray blessings on these students tonight. In Christ's name, amen. amen. Hey guys, before we run off to groups, just a reminder that this Sunday is Serve Our City. If you haven't signed up yet, get signed up for that. You can go on the website, pantano.church. You can still sign up. There's a students option. Please come, hang, and uh, serve along that. And then uh, next Wednesday, is my last Wednesday here, so don't miss that. Come hang out with me. We'll have a little party after service. And then the following Wednesday is Thanksgiving week, so there's no service on um, that Wednesday night, okay? Next couple Wednesdays are pretty cool. One day for a party, one day for uh, Thanksgiving preparation. So, you know, help your mom with that turkey or something. Uh, uh, boys, guys, you are for groups here in a moment. You're going to head to the other room, and ladies, you're going to stay in here, and then we'll break up from there. Middle school girls tend toward this side of the room. High school girls go that way. Boys, uh, I don't know. They'll tell you when you get in there that if you don't know where you're going, follow other people, and uh, they will get you to where you need to go. All right? Cool. Be rad for Jesus. Have a great time in groups.